It was the best four years of my life, I'd say. So I came here in 2007 and yeah, played, I mean, until senior year, that's when my health issues started. So I had, we had three good years before, made the NCAAs every season, trained a lot. I was uh, very fit, so everything was going perfect until that uh, season in February 2015, yeah. I think it was uh, in the fall of his uh, senior year when he was playing in Chapel Hill. He was playing in the ITA Regional Championships and uh, his heart was racing at a really high speed and the trainer made him stop the match that he was playing and he really wasn't very well at that match point. And then after that, it just sort of progressed, I think, where he you know, was always sort of dizzy and he always said he didn't feel very well. He always was tired um, and so he didn't play very much at all the whole spring. Yeah, so it, it happened that senior year, I was on the tennis court actually, hitting some balls, and then I saw that I struggled to follow the ball. I was getting dizzy and I had some weird head pressure. And so those were the first signs that I was like, yeah, someone, something's off, is it just uh, a virus or something? I didn't know in the beginning. Uh, and then running sprints, which I usually had a lot of ease to finish first doing that. I, had to, I struggled to finish in the pack, so that's when that year, yeah, senior year, uh, the spring season, right in the beginning of the season, that it happens. So I was on the court and after two weeks, I was like, uh, some, something's off. And I was lucky enough to have all the doctors here at Tech uh, take this under control and kind of try to figure out what was happening. So at least I felt in good hands. It was really strange for me to, to have to stop playing and not sure what was going on, but at least I was in good hands here at Tech. When he was the last year at Virginia Tech, um, that's when he came back home. He said he wasn't feeling good after like January, February 2011. And, uh, and I said, oh, it's not the same kid anymore, you know. Well, it was so hard to know because, you know, he went to the doctor and they, they did all kinds of, they, I think our medical staff who, who was, is amazing. I mean, Dr. Rogers and Dr. Beato did every test they could think of uh, on, on Sebastian for a lot of different things. He had, a, you know, the heart racing sort of led to blood pressure and they were worried about that for a while and then there were just all kinds of different things that they tested him for, you know, equilibrium and all, all sorts of things, but um, we knew something was wrong, but we just never really knew what it was and to what extent and certainly would never have dreamed that he was going to have a, you know, brain surgery. At the end, the last time I was hospitalized in Quebec City, they mentioned the tumor again and they were like, well, uh, yeah, the cyst is quite big, but we don't know much about it. And then me, when they said don't know much about it, it was very different than saying it's not that, which was the answer I was always getting. Uh, so yeah, then I did some research online and found the neurosurgeons in California who knew a lot about it and were like, well, yeah, if you, you, have you been tested for this, this and this? Yes, you have. Well, yeah, your chances of getting back to normal are extremely high. We can do the surgery. No, well, it's Sebastian that found the, the solution because he's the one who got in contact with uh, the doctors because in Quebec they said it wasn't that. The cyst didn't cause any uh, symptoms. So Sebastian kept on going on Facebook and all of that and talking with people that had the same thing as him. And they had the same symptoms, so he says it has to be the cyst. So uh, that's when he got in contact with uh, Dr. Kelly in Santa Monica in California and he spoke with them and he says, yeah, it's, for sure it's that. Uh, but yeah, it was $95,000 for the surgery. So then that was another a little challenge that I had to face. But uh, yeah, we came out in the newspapers. So a lot of money was raised back home. We had the tech community that helped also. I was in the newspapers here and we raised 110,000 in three weeks. So that was absolutely amazing. I didn't think it was gonna go that fast at all. Uh, so yeah, so I came out in the newspapers January 13th and I had surgery February 12th. So less than a month I was on the surgery table with uh, yeah, all the money that we needed to have the surgery. So it was pretty cool and the extra money went to help people who needed it. So that was also pretty awesome. Coach Thompson through this was yeah, it's, I mean, it's probably one of the reasons, I didn't think I was gonna get emotional today at all, but Coach Thompson is one of the reasons. Uh, he saw me when I was 15 years old, uh, to coming at Tech, like destroying some physical records to then not being able to function. And he, he came to Quebec City with his family and I was supposed to be with him, but I was actually hospitalized. So he saw me through all the phases and he actually came for the surgery in California, which was a surprise, he didn't tell me. He came the day before, uh, the night before. Like he showed up to my front door 
uh, so like to me that means the world uh, he was there with my parents so it almost felt them feel more at ease and kind of get their mind off of it uh, and now it was the first time you know the last time I saw him that's what I was saying outside I said the last time you saw me I was in the hospital bed and I gave you a fist bump and here I am now having walked already more than 500 miles uh, to come here and he's one of the reasons for sure that I was not going to miss coming through Blacksburg. Yet. Oh, Jim, Jim Thompson was there when he got operated and it was like um, something that was really good to have him around and uh, I don't know, it, it really helped us through it. I mean, I don't think I went out of my way at all, but uh, you know, certainly I, I spoke to him all the time. You know, when he was sick, he was certainly near the computer a lot. And, um, He's been a great friend and a great uh, was a great player for us, but also you know just a great person and a great player in our, our program. And I, I build great bonds with all our players, and so it was easy to keep in touch with him and care about him all through the whole process. Still to this day, I say I chose Tech because of Coach Thompson. First of all, uh, I just thought he was such a good person, and I had met his family. And then when I saw Tech, then that was a sealed deal. So, but yeah, that was our relationship from the beginning. I always had uh, liked him not only as a tennis coach, but as a person. So to be here today and see him and whatnot means the world to me because, yeah, he's like not my second father, but someone very important in my life. Yeah, so the walk came upon in Australia. When, so I decided to leave for Australia for two reasons, to travel, first of all, but also for people not to know my story. I wanted to not know, people didn't know that I was number one in Canada in the juniors or that I had, a, or that I had brain surgery. So that's why I was going there for. But after a couple months, it came out that I was a tennis player and that I had brain surgery. And people were like, oh, yeah, we just know you accept the tennis coach who's always happy, what is that, you know? Uh, so I had to share my story. And uh, there's a mother that said, well, my daughter has serious health issues, would you like to talk with her? Like just to keep her going and maybe giving her hope. And that's when to me it rang a bell. I was like, I shouldn't hide my story. If I can only help one person like smile and be like, yeah, like who's about to give up on himself or on their dreams. Hopefully I can make them smile and be like, all right, I'm gonna get through this if he did it. So yeah, that's when I had this idea and the walk, it's cause I wasn't able to walk anymore. So I was like, well, I wasn't able to walk 15 minutes a day. Here I am walking eight hours a day across America to share with you guys that you can overcome tough situations in life and accomplish amazing things afterwards. Oh, wow, you're gonna do what? <laughs> That's uh, amazing uh, to even, I think, think of being able to walk across America, let alone do it. And um, you know, I thought he was just kind of dreaming at first, and then I realized he was serious, and so. Um, that's just an amazing thing. Nothing can get you prepared to, to this kind of challenge than getting into it and kind of learning through it. I've already learned a lot. I was walking too fast in the beginning, slowed down my pace, and I was going really well. Yeah. First I say, wow, <laughs> you know, it's going to be a long, long walk. But I know there's a lot of people, they say, you know, in the United States, people are really kind. You know, they're going to help you out you, while you're going to go walking. People, you know, they come give you a bottle of water or they're going to give you a meal or whatever there. And the, the thing about this walk is that he can help other people. You know, like uh, him, he never gave up, and that's the word he wants to pass around, to never, never give up whatever your situation is. It's an awesome feeling to see a guy go from the bottom to the top, you know, in terms of health. health. Uh, he was really, uh, we, we, went, we went one time to Quebec City and saw him there, and he was 30 pounds underweight and just looked, awful, not the same person that I remembered at Virginia Tech, full of life, and to see him now full of life back and, and being able to go around, he's been around the world and taught tennis in Australia and then come back to do this amazing thing for other people to spread the message about, you know, that there is hope when, when you, things are really bad, uh, it's, it's, it just goes to say, what, show what a great person he really is. Yeah, well, just, I don't know, I think you, you cannot control often what is thrown to you, either health uh, issues you have or your health care or whatnot, like things are not in control, but what you are in control is your mindset, your attitude and how you react to those situations. So to me, that's what I try to preach the most is you're in control when you wake up in the morning and you choose to either be happy or unhappy 
or whine about a situation or try to find the positive out of it. So that's what I tell people, go at it one day at a time, try to be the best person you can be every day, surround yourself by your loved ones, people who you care about, and it's gonna be okay. Like at the end of the day, you can find a way if you have the right attitude about it.